three levels of concrete slab on top of each other. The force of the blast exploded outward and blew down a wall over the Path Railroad concourse, which is located at the B3 level, sending debris cascading down on turnstiles, escalators, and the platform below on the B4 level. The blast also destroyed the concrete block walls of five tele, uh, tower elevator shafts, creating a flue for smoke migration up through Tower 1. The major comp uh, systems, excuse me, the, <clears throat> the loss of life occurred in two locations. One victim was in the vicinity of the blast site. I think you can see some of the offices if you move the, uh, to one of the next, uh, uh, I think there in the, in the background are the office areas. One victim was in the vicinity of the parking lot. Four other victims, all of the Port Authority employees, were in a lunchroom on the B2 level directly in the path of the blast. The initial blast took out our main power source our police area, and the operations control center, which is out uh, near the, the, the truck uh, uh, dock. And it ha that housed our main communications capability, our alarm monitoring capacity, and security central control. We immediately lost the ability to communicate with tenants throughout the complex or to institute our pre-planned emergency evacuation procedures, both our police desk and away from that, our operations desk were both knocked out. The emergency generator, which is located in a different area and provides our backup power, kicked in for a brief period of time before shutting down due to two factors. Ultimately, the unavailability of water cooling to its engines because all of the pipes throughout the subgrade uh, area were blown out and because of the appearance of 1.8 million gallons of water flooding the operations control board. Those two factors would have rendered our backup redundant system uh, inoperable. Uh, ironically, three primary power feeds, even with the magnitude of this blast, were still operating, but we had to shut them down in order for the fire department to uh, extinguish, uh, uh, extinguish the, uh, the fire. Minutes after the explosion, we began, staff began to determine the nature and extent of damage to the complex, and I want to stress a couple of points now. The tower buildings, the two towers, stood tall. The structural steel supports that frame these 110-story buildings all rest in bedrock. They were not compromised at all. The concrete slab parking levels in the blast area were totally destroyed and collapsed, thus removing horizontal support to several steel columns under the Vista Hotel, which I think you can see uh, there. These columns have been braced. Commissioner Kelly showed you some of that area in the slides to provide structural stability to the Vista and allow uh, the criminal investigation uh, to, uh, uh, to proceed. The major systems of the complex are being examined and the majority have been returned to use. Steam heat was returned, communications to the elevators have been restored, generators have been tested, uh, uh, and so on. Obviously, the major concern for reoccupancy is the ability to provide life safety systems. Uh, these systems must be operative uh, before the buildings uh, uh, can, uh, uh, can be occupied. I should note that as part of a $500 million modernization program which was currently underway, even prior to the blast, we were already in the design phase of a decentralized communication and operation system that had been worked out by the New York City Fire Department. Uh, that was scheduled for completion before the end of 1995, obviously in light of what occurred, we are going to seek prudently to accelerate the, the, this project. And for the short term, we've ordered some interim things. Battery-powered lighting as a third power source uh, for our stairwells and a number of other things that we will be working out 
uh, with uh, the fire department. An issue that has attracted a great deal of attention is the degree to which the Port Authority took precautions against possible attacks at the complex. This, in fact, has been a concern of the agency through the years, and the choices made by the Port Authority's leadership have been consistent with the function of the Trade Center and the practices prevalent in similar high visibility uh, uh, structures. Uh, a report in 1985 and another in 1986 uh, included a recommendation for the removal of underground public parking as a possible precaution. These recommendations, quite frankly, were rejected by management at the time, reasoning, we believe, validly that a World Trade complex offering tenant services, tourist attractions, shopping, restaurants, and entertainment must also offer parking. In fact, hundreds, even thousands of buildings uh, are in the city and across the country uh, do, in fact, offer a, a public parking. In 1991, prior to and during the, the Gulf War, safety and security issues at all of our land, sea, and air facilities were re-examined, and uh, certain security measures uh, were put in place. We did not eliminate public parking uh, at that time uh, as well. Obviously, we need now to consider at the Trade Center and in the nation what last month's blast means for our society. Without doubt, uh, it created a new benchmark for security. On our part, we will repair structures and systems and restore tenant occupancy at the complex with an awareness of these new conditions. Every decision made about subgrade parking, for example, and other security-sensitive issues is being revisited in cooperation with appropriate, uh, with appropriate authorities. But let me stress this. The World Trade Center was designed to be a crossroads, not a fortress. We, along with other operators of major business and tourist complex, must maintain free and open access to our facilities while providing adequate and necessary security uh, to our tenants uh, and patrons. Tenants returning to our building will see many differences. Among the many improvements will be battery pack lighting and fire safety trained personnel as an additional redundancy to what existed uh, even uh, before this uh, uh, incident. I would be remiss if I did not use this forum to thank all who came to our aid during this terrible incident. The New York City Police, Fire and Emergency Service Units, our own Port Authority Police, the hundreds of federal, state, and local law enforcement officials who were able to crack the case in less than a week, the thousands of employees and tenants whose brave actions during the evacuation served as a reminder to the entire nation of the tenacity of New Yorkers. I welcome your questions and realize that any information we gain by reviewing this event and steps that led up to it may help avert such a tragedy in the future. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Brezinoff and uh, Commissioner Kelly. And again, we appreciate your being here. Just uh, first, a quick one to Mr. Brezinoff. You mentioned that, of course, many of my constituents work in the World Trade Center and all of us in the New York area are concerned. You mentioned that the April 1st deadline, you're quite certain now, would be met, knock wood. The record will show uh, Mr. Brezinoff knocking the wooden table. Um, but uh, you said it might be a little sooner than that. Could well, you give us a little, uh, a little are, feel for that? Because we're all on tenter hooks and we're worried about people moving are, out of the, of the trade center, et cetera. Yeah, about let that. me say that I have not heard from a single tenant uh, any interest uh, in uh, not returning to the World Trade Center that fiduciary trust, a large right. investment uh, banking and uh, uh, asset management uh, organization, one of the largest tenants in the World Trade Center, reaffirmed its intention to sign a new lease for expanded space only last week. We also signed a lease with a new restaurant for the, uh, for the World Trade Center. Uh, we will be doing a number of things to ameliorate the problems that our tenants are facing in this interim period and to offer them uh, assistance and incentives uh, as they return to the Trade Center. There are two towers, as you know. The one that was most seriously uh, uh, affected uh, was number one, the one where uh, my own office uh, uh, is. Uh, that uh, uh, 
will take a little bit longer to clean. I believe that we will be able to shave days from the April 1 deadline, uh, or D-Day as we've established it, for Tower 2, uh, the, B, uh, uh, the B Tower. I'm reasonably confident that we'll be able to do that, though I will stress that we meet at about 7 a.m. every morning and go over the last uh, 12 hours of construction a a activity. It is still a crime scene. Uh, we uh, uh, must uh, uh, defer and will defer to uh, uh, the investigative authorities as they go forward with uh, uh, their, uh, their activities. New problems emerge thus far uh, through the dedication of uh, Port Authority uh, uh, personnel and uh, staff. We've been able to cope with those problems and we're ahead of schedule. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kelly, I guess, other than uh, such obvious incidents as the LaGuardia bombing a while back, um, to what extent in recent years has the New York Police Department seen less dramatic acts of violence that you would qualify as terrorist in the sense that it, the violence was politically, possibly religiously motivated? If so, could you tell us something about the perpetrators and NYPD's approach to dealing with this type of violence? I guess the question on the minds of most people is, uh, in New York and elsewhere, are you concerned that this may be the, seri the, the first of a series of such incidents, and what uh, steps are being taken to deal with that if it's a possibility? Well, obviously we're concerned about the possibility of being a uh, first in, in a series. I would say to you that, uh, as I mentioned in my, my prepared remarks, we have had a Joint Terrorist Task Force in existence for 13 years. I think they have done uh, an outstanding job. A lot of things that, uh, quite frankly, I'm not at liberty to, uh, to discuss here. Uh, but th there has been uh, a fair number of investigations, uh, surveillance uh, conducted, and I think their good work has perhaps forestalled or, or, or limited the, the possibility of, of acts that might be loosely referred to as uh, terrorist acts uh, from taking place. Uh, I, I'd say that is the vehicle uh, that we have that has proven to be um, uh, effective, and if anything, I think we'll just buttress that, uh, that whole structure that we have now. Have you seen an increase in, in, in attempted incidents, attempted acts like this in the last few years, or has it been relatively flat, and then all of a sudden this one incident occurred? No, it's hard to characterize. I would say relatively flat, though, if I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this, because this is a question I hear a lot of New Yorkers just on the streets debating, uh, and that is, it seems, at least from the evidence that we've seen, that the group that did this was not one of these professional uh, terrorist uh, groups, such as perhaps the one behind uh, the Pan Am bombing flight 103, that it was more, um, amateur would be the wrong word, but a less repeated, less polished operation, they didn't use sophisticated explosives, etc. And I guess the question I have, is that fair to say, and does that indicate that we should be, some people say we should be less worried, because this is not the most professional group in the world, and struck once. On the other hand, people say um, we should be more worried, it indicates that it doesn't take the tremendous amount of skill and planning and years of training to pull off one of these terrible incidents. Uh, could you elaborate on that a little I, bit? I don't for think us, I'm please? in a position to characterize this event as uh, sophisticated or less than sophisticated. I, I think it's too early in, in the investigation to, to say that. I think it's, it's general knowledge that uh, uh, there is a lot of information abroad uh, out there that the uh, people can gather if they, they want to make uh, explosive devices. That's just the state of the world in 1993. Uh, but I don't know at this juncture whether or not we can say this is a sophisticated or, uh, or simple uh, device. Right. What about, what do you think, um, using your experience as commissioner of the idea of putting these tagants in all explosives? Would that help you in your, in, in not only this particular case, but in other cases like it? And would it impede any of the commercial activities that go on um, by people who use explosives legitimately? Right. Uh, our bomb people think it's an excellent idea. I know it's been uh, endorsed by the International Association of Bomb Technicians. So uh, as far as impeding in, in the commercial area, I think uh, just a, a, a reasonable approach will, will take care of most of that. But the people in the bomb investigative community, uh, to the best of my knowledge, wholeheartedly support that concept. 
Okay. Um, let me ask you this, Mr. Brezinov, uh, and again, you've underscored, and I think well put, that the World Trade Center